Hey there! And welcome to this video about how I recently moved my Yugo site and its content over to another repository. So I split my content from the actual website. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why I actually did that and how I did it. One of the reasons that I split my content was that I wanted to reuse this content whenever I'm going to test out a new framework or a new static site generator. And I do this for testing out front matter CMS. Another reason is to make this content available to you and readers of my blog to make changes to it whenever they see that something is missing or that there's a typo. So that makes it easier for me to share my content and to do contributions to it. So to start, it's all about moving the content. So let's go to GitHub and there you can see how I structured the new repository. In this new repository, there is a content folder uh, which is coming from Yugo and there I have my post and all the markdown files are in it. I also have my static folder in which I have my media assets. As I'm also using front matter, I wanted to keep the front matter.json file closer with the actual content. So I also moved it over to this repository. In the file, I did a couple of changes. Like I updated the public uh, folder paths to dot front matter and also the page folders. That will be my new location that I will need to configure inside the actual Yugo project. When moving over to Visual Studio Code, this is where I manage my website, I want to open a new terminal in order to start linking the submodule to my current project. I can do so with the git submodule add command. There's one argument that's really important for me, that's the dash b main argument, which is actually defining the main branch of the submodule that I want to add. Depending on how much content you have, it will take a while before that takes in place. So I speed up the video. Once the content is downloaded, we can actually do one more command. And the next command is to ensure that we always do merges when we retrieve changes from our submodule. So once you run this command, you will see that in your .git modules file that there is like a branch set and also an update strategy. So now that we have everything in place, it's time to configure front matter. In my root, there I find my front matter JSON file, which contained the previous configuration, which we don't need anymore because we just need to reference the front matter JSON file coming from our new blog content repository. And the only thing that we need to do is add the front matter.extend setting and then reference it to the dot front matter slash front matter.json file. So that's where the configuration actually lives. So good, we have that in place. Now we can run Yugo. If I run Yugo server, you will see that I only receive nine pages. Nine pages, but I have like more than 400 uh, blog posts already created. So where is everything coming from? That's because Yugo doesn't know yet where our content lives. And previously, I was trying it out uh, together with Astro and there I had to symlink my content and my asset folders. Now with Yugo, you don't have to do that. Yugo just expects the configuration to remap your content and assets folder. So if you go over to your config.yaml file, you can place this kind of configuration in it. And then the moment you're going to run Yugo server again, you will see that all of your pages are now getting recreated correctly. That's a great thing. When it comes to updating your submodule, I have a new GitHub action workflow in place. And this GitHub action workflow, the only thing that it does is the moment something is pushed over to the submodule repository, it will trigger my website build. So let's give this a try. Over here, I already created a new content file. And when I move over to the source control panel in Visual Studio Code, I can see that the submodules have changes. All I need to do is write a commit message and then do the syncing and it will automatically start everything. So once syncing is done, I can move over to GitHub to the content project and there I can see in the actions that there is an action already triggered. It goes pretty fast because the only thing that it needs to do is trigger the build. So once that is done, I can check on the website where the actual build process is going to run if there is a new build running for me. 
So now that we know that build is working, we can actually move over to the content management. On the content management side, that's where I wanted to give others the ability to do changes to it. If they spot an issue in the content or something is missing or even a typo. Now you can move over to the blog repository, open a markdown file and do a change to it. Once you did a change, you can do a PR. In my case, I'm going to commit and then I can retrieve this commit within Visual Studio Code to easily retrieve the new changes that were made online. So I just waited until the git commit was done. Now I move over to Visual Studio Code and there I run git submodule update dash dash remote. And this makes sure that I get the latest change that happened on the submodule repository. So once that is done, I can see the change live in Visual Studio Code. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you learned something from it or might even give it a try in your website project. So I would love to hear what your thoughts about this are. So feel free to leave a comment uh, down below. Thank you very much. See you next time.